next up we have Leo, and he's going to talk to us about how do you marry Rust and JavaScript. And mm -hmm. Just put that on your, you can hold it. Yeah, so. In front of oh, you, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Awesome. Okay, so we're at a Rust meetup, but who here has used JavaScript extensively? Fair enough. Like, you know, a lot of people complain about JavaScript. Everyone's replacing JavaScript tooling with Rust. Like, you know, SWC is replacing TSC and all that, you know. Like, why am I bringing JavaScript back into Rust, right? Uh, yeah, Rust, <laughs> JS in my Rust. Um, one of the biggest reasons is powerful and easy scripting, which I'll get into uh, later. It is much easier to work with than WebAssembly. If you've ever worked with a WebAssembly interface for some program, it is so convoluted to like, unless they have a library for it, but then if they don't have a library for it, then it's quite painful to do, uh, to use. And then also another very popular language for scripting, Lua, I don't like it. Um, anyway, so examples are always useful. Like for example, if you want to have uh, game scripting or modding, so let's say Gary's mod, who has played Gary's mod? Yeah, uh, Gary's mod uses Lua for all of its uh, mods. Um, you know, there's also plenty of other games, like for example, popular Minecraft mods for um, adding computers to Minecraft. Uh, to Minecraft, I'm pretty sure all of them use Lua, there's two major ones. Um, yeah, advanced automation for professional programs. So here is used After Effects. Yeah, After Effects uh, in like, when you have a layer and you wanna have a value for it, you can either like set the value manually, you can animate the value, or you can use a JavaScript function to describe the value. And it's really, really handy. Um, plug assistant for large apps, like, you know, you, everyone here probably knows like Blender or like other major programs that use a scripting system inside of them. Um, of course, many programs use things like Lua and Python, like Blender uses Python, but JavaScript is still pretty good for this kind of stuff. And yeah, anything that requires uh, flexibility and isn't too performance uh, sensitive. I guess, yeah, JavaScript isn't the fastest, but it's really fast still, faster than Python. Um, yeah, so, and wh why not Lua, right? Firstly, array start at one, we all hate that, uh, enough said. And also, um, syntax is less familiar than C style languages, so like when you look at it, you see like, you know, if, and, or like a for, and then, I forgot what the ending term, term for for is, no, basically, yeah, the, the syntax is very weird uh, relative to C-style languages, which we're all used to. Uh, no type-oriented tooling, so like we got TypeScript and um, JavaScript, and you can convert it back to JavaScript, but in Lua, there's no such thing as far as I can tell, and no, like, not as many features as JavaScript. If you want to have an async um, interface for your modding API, um, you can't do that in Lua really well. Anyway, what prompted this anyway? So, like, we're, we're discussing projects here. This is my, uh, the project I was working with. So this is not my project initially, it is a project I found and started contributing to. So the context behind it is, uh, it is the name is Rix. Um, who here has heard of Nix and NixOS? Okay, a lot of people. Um, <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Um, I've been personally using NixOS as my home, uh, like main daily driver since the beginning of the year and it's been great. So when I found Rix, um, I realized that it is a perfect project to contribute to because it's trying to rewrite the Nix interpreter in Rust using JavaScript. I'll explain that later. Um, anyway, so yeah, Nix is a functional programming language. Um, it is a very unique language. You would be very confused if you first look at it, unless you're familiar with Haskell, but even then it deviates a lot from Haskell. The whole point of it is to like, describe a configuration. So it's like turbo-powered Lua YAML rather than a programming language, even though it is a programming Turing complete language that you can do anything in technically still. Um, it is interpreted. Um, yeah, so someone decided that it's a smart idea to transpile Nix to JavaScript and run it that way. And that's the guy that created Rix. So because Nix is interpreted, why don't we use an existing interpreting engine to potentially have it run faster, right? And it's called Rix because it's written in Rust. Um, and yeah, I decided to help contribute. So how I found Rix. I've been using NixOS for a while, as I just said, and I stumbled on Rix, um, and it looked like my kind of project because I do love programming languages, I love Rust, and I love, uh, I don't know, all of the above. Um, and so I started with a small PR contributing a couple built-in functions because the um, it is very incomplete at the moment. Like for example, when I looked at it, there was like three out of 170 something built-ins implemented. So I added two more built-ins, I threw more built-ins. He merged my pull request, 
And over time, I did a couple more pull requests, and he added me as a contributor, the, he being the um, original creator of this tool. Uh, the Rix project structure. So I was part of the reason that this got restructured in the first place, but the current structure is a mono repo where there is the runtime. Not sure how well you can read that. It says nixjs-rt for runtime. And it is the JavaScript runtime that describes the actual, like, the type system of Nix under the hood. So like the classes that we use in order to then transpile into JavaScript later easier. And after this gets compiled um, using yarn, or using NPM, um, we use tsup to compile it into, from TypeScript into a single JavaScript binary, uh, JavaScript file. And the single JavaScript file then gets into, imported using includes str in Rust directly into V8. So this is how it gets loaded. We include str, uh, the lib.mjs file, we execute it, get the value back. This value is like the namespace. So for example, when you export something, that value gets added to the name namespace. And then we set that namespace to a global variable called n inside of the um, inside of the runtime. So then we can basically you can refer to the n variable from anywhere inside of our generated code afterwards, and it would refer to the runtime. And then the next part is to compile the next code to JavaScript as well. Um, it is not clean. Uh, we the code literally just does plus equals to build up a long, long string that describes the whole code. I could not find a way to make this cleaner while keeping the same theoretical performance. Um, if anyone has ideas on how to make this cleaner, because right now we just use like literally just plus equals on each thing and it's really bad for anything that requires, for example, loops. It gets really confusing. Um, if anyone has ideas on how to make something like this cleaner without sacrificing performance, because this is like the whole point here is to make this as fast as possible. Um, because we're trying to use JavaScript to beat out the interpreted version of Nix. Yeah, let me know. Anyway, executing the code. Um, don't really have any code snippets to show here because it is a lot, but basically it transpiles the code to yeah, JavaScript, puts it into the V8 runtime, and any imports that the Nix code does get sent back to a Rust function, which then uses the path that it provides to import, like load the file, pass it again, convert it to JavaScript, execute the JavaScript, and return it back to the JavaScript runtime for the previous invocation. Because in Nix, there is this built-in called import, and when, you, when it calls import, it just loads another file and treats it as another expression. And that, that was quite difficult to implement, but um, yeah, with V8, it's surprisingly interesting. Um, and then, then you, after everything gets executed, uh, it needs to pass the results back into Rust. So this is one long function that checks uh, if um, a certain value is of an instance um, of like, for example, is it a function instance or is it a attribute set instance, string instance and so on based on the instances from the runtime. And based on that it passes it recursively and converts it uh, back into Rust values that we can then display to the user. Um, and then yeah, profit. So here is an example of a simple this is very weird syntax because Nix is very weird to read, but basically this is a lambda here, the first part here, it's a lambda with parameters a, b, a plus b, and then we call the lambda because there's no, function calls are done with a space and then value. So you call the lambda with a equals one and b equals two, returns three. And then the, here's a um, built-ins working. So built-ins dot import flake dot Nix, so it imports another file and get me the description field on that file and here is uh, the description. Anyway, how can you do this at home? Uh, remind me after this talk to post a link to the V8 demo repo that I made. Um, and you should be able to get a basic implementation up and running based on the example. Um, and then from there you can build it up to be more useful. But yeah, anyway, thanks for listening. So this presentation was in fact brought to you by NixOS running on my computer. <laughs> no way, no way. Yeah, like it is. On Mac? Oh, it's a no, it's not a Mac, it's yeah. a framework, yeah. Oh, oh, it's a, my bad, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I'm getting a framework as well, it's like, look, the color is the same as Mac. Yeah, <laughs> um, cool, any questions? Yes. Are you fuzzing it? Uh, we're not at that stage yet, we barely have implemented enough built-ins, but 
we barely have implemented enough built-ins for this to be a viable thing. We first need to actually start implementing built-ins, um, and then we can start executing real Nix code, like proper proper Nix code. And the, like you, you guys, like Nix uses no Nix packages. We need to actually start executing Nix packages first, and then we can like think of a fuzzing later. Awesome. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So I've heard that V8 is a notoriously tricky C++ code base and very tricky to um, kind of work with and embed mm. into your own application. And um, I'm just, because like, if I was to do that in Rust, I would reach for Deno Core. That kind of does all that work for you. But it doesn't seem like that's being used in this project. So is it using some other library for that or is it binding to V8 itself? How does that work? I forgot to mention, yeah. Basically the library I'm using is literally called V8 on Cargo. And I'm pretty sure Deno depends on it. I'm pretty sure the Deno team works on that library and it is just Rust bindings for Deno. It is not too clean. Like, you still need, they still need to deal with the fact that it's originally C++ code base. Mm. It is usable and um, when looking at C++ code examples for how to do some things, I can translate that back into Rust and see how I actually should do it in Rust. So it like, it's a bit painful at times if you want to do more advanced things, but it is supported by Deno, the Deno team in the first place. So is this um, something that Deno Core almost would build on top of, or is? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Okay, cool, thanks. How feature complete would you say it is, like to like replace, replace the current one? Uh, with Nix? Yeah. Well, we have like seven out of like 170 built-ins implemented. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, I, like the last pull request I made was implementing a bunch of uh, new error handling, waiting for the guy to review it. After that, I'll go straight into doing more built-ins and tests because I'm not going to add more built-ins before error handling is fixed. Yeah. So yeah. All right, cool. Thank you. Hello. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, on the typed Lua stuff randomly, mm. uh, the, so Roblox uses Lua for basically all of their game scripting oh, and all their mm -hmm. game stuff, and they have their own implementation of Lua that they've had for ages, and mm -hmm. they have actually been adding type support to it, similar to TypeScript. Like, it's not as good as TypeScript, but it, it's like, it is type support for it, um, and you can use it from the mLua Rust crate today. So oh. it, there is, it is there in some capacity. I was going to ask, is it something I can go on GitHub and find right now? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, no, not many people seem to know it exists, so I just thought... Yeah, I'd just... nice to know. Thanks. <laughs> That's pretty neat. Cool. Thank you very much, Leo. No break? I thought we had to break first. Next one. Okay. All right, next one. <laughs> okay, let's uh, have a question. Okay, cool. <laughs>